Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's episode of LR Live, we're going to be fitting some side steps. Now, I'm not sure which ones, but hopefully you guys are going to help me decide. So the first option we're going to look at are some side step runners. Um, these are from Britpart and they are a black version, which I think would go really nicely with our Defender styling. Now, these have come a long way since I looked at fitting them. So in the past, they used to be sort of made with a gloss black finish, which was really not very good quality, would come off really easily. Uh, they've really made a difference because this feels like almost a raptured finish. So it's a textured finish, it feels really hard wearing. Um, and the build quality is superb. I mean, just look at the quality of that, the way you've got this nice, big, thick rubber section that runs the whole way down the step. It's all riveted into place. This tread plate here as well is a much harder finish. It's not that smooth, glossy finish that you'd uh, seen on a lot of side steps in the past. Um, these are like an SVX style, I believe. So um, again, you know, build quality is really good. They're not super heavy. I mean, considering they're a massive piece look, uh, that is going to go on the side of the vehicle. They're probably no heavier than two of the fold-up side steps that we had fitted previously. Uh, which brings me to the next option. Do we go for a traditional side step? Now what I've got here is an uh, aftermarket side step. This is from LR Parts. Now it's massively cheaper than a standard uh, traditional original Land Rover part. Um, but is there really that much in it? I mean, it's a fairly basic piece of engineering here. It's just two pieces of metal connected with bolts and a spring. I mean, it's not a lot to it. And yet this is 75 pounds cheaper uh, than an original Land Rover part. So for about just over 40 quid, I think these are. Um, and you get all the fixings, you get the support bar as well. and. I really like the traditional look. You can buy the an original Land Rover rubber piece. They're not cheap, but when you combine this with an aftermarket step, because they're exactly the same size, you can take this rubber off, uh, you can drill out these rivets, and you can just replace that rubber with a Land Rover one, and you pretty much got what I would consider to be a very, very good replacement and a very original looking part for less than half the price of one from Land Rover. So if you want that genuine look uh, and it's something you really want to maintain on your vehicle, if you're replacing like for like, maybe you don't have to replace them all, although it's likely, um, you could go down the road of buying an aftermarket step and a genuine rubber and just combine the two. It's super easy and it would look really good. So that is definitely an option. So how hard is it to fit them? Now, the reason this looks a little bit different is because I've actually removed the side sills. Um, now I've done that because I had to get access to the bolts to remove the old side steps and they were really hard work. So if you're gonna be removing any kind of step, whether it's a folding, old folding style side step or the side runners, whatever you've got on your vehicle, if you're gonna be removing them, the easiest thing to do is take these sills off. Now, I was really lucky. The front two folding steps on R110 did unbolt. So as soon as we got them unbolted, I did put a lot of penetrating oil on there, let it penetrate for over a day. Um, the front ones came off okay. The back ones, I needed to use some vice grips to hold some of the blistered nuts. And in the end, one of them had to be cut off because I just literally couldn't get it off. So once they're all in place, we've got them all bolted in, we can then fit our side sills afterwards. It's a much easier way of doing it, I found. So we've got fixing points. We've got one hole here and we've got one hole here. And that are the two, those are the two positions that we removed our side step from. And they are probably, I'm pretty sure, the same positions that we're gonna be mounting the side steps onto. And we'll also be using, on both designs, they have a bar that stretches across, like the traditional fold-up side steps that goes into our rivnuts nuts in the chassis. Now luckily, these are really good. They came off easily. I didn't know that we were gonna to have to reuse them on both sides, so I put the bolts back in to keep moisture and everything out of the threads. Uh, but we're gonna be going back into those anyway. So that gives you an idea of what we're working with. You've got this rail that runs all the way along the sill and that's what you're mounting your steps onto. And then you're just supporting them by mounting them onto the chassis. Right, one bolt in. And definitely you don't want to be tightening these up. This bracket goes on the inside of that bar that I showed you. Pop your bolt in. I'm just 
nip it up. It's that simple. Look how good and easy that is. And so make sure you've got your L bracket shaped like that. Uh, and I've put this bar on the inside at the rear and the other bar goes on the inside at the front. So both the bars are on the inside. I would say it's a shame that they haven't given you some slightly shorter bolts for these fittings because these look a bit big and ugly, but it is what it is. So presumably, and I'm guessing here, but I'm going to do it anyway. I haven't read the instructions. Should I have done? Probably. Um, but what we're going to do is do up the fixing to the chassis first. On both. <clears throat> then we're going to do up our bolts here. Now I should say on the top here they are finger tight so they are all they are wound in but they're not tight tight yet. Okay and then I've just got to tighten them up at the top here. So this would be a right pain if I hadn't removed the sill. But luckily I have. Now I've spun the truck around and I'm going to be fitting the folding side steps to this side of the vehicle, that's the driver's side. It's the same kind of process as we did with the side steps. You've got these two holes here on the bracket, so they literally get offered up into that channel and we'll bolt it in. Now in this kit, you do get rib nuts as well, but they are not the hex type. They actually, need a, you'll need a rib nut setter to put them in. Um, so good luck with that. Okay, so trying to drop it on your head because it is quite heavy. So this actually goes inside the channel. Okay. One. I'm hoping there's, oh, there's no wobbling required, no movement. That's straight in there, look. Oh, that's not a 13. That's interesting. I don't know why they wouldn't just use a 13. Never mind. Uh, yeah, it's a 12. Little. <laughs> Do you want to know the good news or the bad news? The good news is it's a 13 on the back and a 12 on the front. So the nut is a 13 and the head on the bolt is 12. Now don't do them up tight because we've got to put that bar in yet. If you want to, you can actually assemble these before you put them onto your vehicle, which might be a bit easier. But just remember, unlike in the video where I fitted it incorrectly, and I've now addressed that, but you want the bar, the flat section needs to go against the chassis. Um, the curved bent piece needs to be going from the bottom, facing upwards onto this bracket. And remember, it's a 12 and a 13. So, like that. <coughs> There we go. And that's how we have it. So when it's on the vehicle, you've got the most support on that bracket that you can get to support the weight on the step. You know, I am best part of 19 stone. So this poor step's gonna get an absolute battering. So we'll make sure these are nice and tight, shall we? So there is our new flippable step like it. So out of the box, these do look very easy to move. I don't know if I want them quite that easy. So I think you can tighten these up a little bit. <coughs> yep. Just to make them how you want them. It's pretty simple. There. I don't want them flapping about when I'm driving. So I've tightened it up so it's stiff. So that's much better and obviously that's going to get better with time but yeah really good now to be fair both the side steps and the side runner step uh, went on without any problems at all i think a lot of that was made a lot easier by me removing the uh, the sills so i would definitely recommend doing that if you're going to be doing a similar job and maybe if you're thinking about replacing those sills uh, give these mantec sills a, a bit of a thought because they're a heavy duty sill they come raw so you can paint them any color to match the vehicle they've got a nice little accent on the back here which you can either highlight or disguise it's up to you depending on what you want to go for but they have super easy to go on they're really made nicely this is only fixed on with two bolts at the moment because i'm waiting for you guys to tell me uh, what to actually fit 
on the vehicle, but it's actually a lot stronger <laughs> already than if I had the old sill in place. I'm just not sure if I'm gonna be happy to run these or the folding side steps. So I need you guys to help me make a decision. You've seen both of them in place. Let's do a vote. Let me know what you think I should keep on the vehicle. Should it be the SVX style side running steps? or the folding steps that are the traditional style, and uh, whatever you decide to go for, then I'm happy to put them on the Defender. So thanks ever so much for watching. Do give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and subscribe if you haven't, and I'll catch you on the next one. Mm -hmm.